Good afternoon, Alexandra. I'm glad to see you again, and thank you for taking the time to answer a few questions. Your project, SciHub, helps scientists around the world get immediate access to extremely valuable scientific information without needing to pay off an excessive amount of money. A huge number of researchers owe their success to your work, so they are closely watching what's going on with the project. So our first question will be, how are you doing? How is the development of SciHub going? How many articles are there in the SciHub database right now? And uh, how many requests a day does the system process? In which direction are you planning to develop? Well, in fact, there are a lot of ideas for the development of the project, but so far little has been realized. The most important thing, in my opinion, is that it has been possible to keep this project afloat. Now, there are about 67 million scientific articles in the database, and users download from 1 million to 1.5 million scientific articles per day. In principle, our plans remain the same. Our first goal is to use the server to collect all possible scientific literature that has ever been published and to provide free, unhindered access to it. The most important thing that we need to achieve is to solve the legal difficulties concerning the activities of the SciHub project. That is, we must ensure that the free dissemination of scientific knowledge is recognized as legitimate. This is what we spoke about last time. At the legislative level, we need to reconsider how we deal with copyright issues. Is this what you mean? Yes. Your project helped spur public discussion about why scientific data should be open and how it can be technically implemented. Not so long ago, the European Commission launched a project to support open science and formed a working group called RISE, Research, Innovation and Science Policy Experts. This group is responsible for the development of various strategic documents and work programs to promote open science in Europe by 2020. I am certainly interested, so I looked at the current programs, and that's about what they offer. First of all, they introduced a rule that publications that contain the results of research funded by European Union grants should be open access. To achieve that, two solutions were proposed. The first is that within the framework of each grant, funding is to be allocated for paying a scientific publishing house to publish a related open access article. The second is a proposal to make the article available in one of the European Union's official free depositories of scientific articles. A depository is a service to which any authors can upload their publications, thus making them open for the scientific community to use. If the journal has copyright limitations, and usually it has, or an embargo period, the authors are prompted to write a letter to the journal to request an exception due to their obligations or the obligations of their scientific organization to the European Union. Such depositories have been organized and now they are being actively replenished with publications. As for the requirement to publish the results of work funded by European Union grants in open access journals, this is certainly good, because it makes information unrestricted and available to the public immediately after publication. Uh, so, what would you say about this system of depositories and these negotiations with publishers? Is this, in your opinion, a step forward? From what I was able to understand, the proposal is quite uncompromising. This European Union law establishes that the placement of these scientific articles in depositories is mandatory, and the scientific publishing houses just have to face the fact that scientists are now making all their articles open access. Therefore, these publishing houses will have to somehow evolve and adapt to the new situation. In principle, it's very similar to what SciHub does. SciHub puts the articles in free access, and the publishing system is accordingly transformed, just like that. While developing its pilot project for Open Science by 2020, the expert group conducted a number of studies and expressed the idea that the platform for reviewing and publishing scientific articles should be financially supported by governments or the public, just like any other socially significant large-scale scientific tools, such as a large telescope or the Large Hadron Collider. What do you think about this approach? To be honest, I do not really like this approach. 
I do not think that there should be any large unified government controlled platform for the publication of scientific articles. I think the ideal solution will be a variety of different platforms for publication. Some of them can be financed by governments, some by universities, and some by the community on a voluntary basis. This is, I think, an appropriate method. Why exactly? Is it to ensure that there is less governmental control? Yes. There should be a certain variety. Centralization is not a very good thing, in my opinion. This is a certain type of monopoly, especially if it is a governmental monopoly. I think it will not be very good. It seems to me that this is somehow circling back to the idea that the government should not interfere, in principle, with the work of different communities, including professional communities. Instead, it should be providing a basic order for everyone that will make it comfortable for people to interact. And then the community must self-organize. Yes. I wouldn't use the term interference, however. If there is some huge governmental monopoly on the publication of scientific articles, it seems to me that it will bring only harm. I want to ask a question that is somewhat away from the battles around Sci-Hub, but is nevertheless important. It is well known that the popularity of major scientific journals is fueled by the way publications in these journals influence the career of a scientist. The influence is quite obvious. Publication in a prestigious journal can help both with useful connections and with funding. Typically, large journals publish stunning positive data, while negative data often remains unpublished. Even during my short career in crowdfunding research on aging, there was one case where the results of a study were negative, and they remain only in the internal report of the scientific organization. Accordingly, the scientific community cannot use such results. However, in science, all data is important, not just the strictly positive part. Negative data should also be available. Do you consider the promotion of publishing all data, including negative data, one of the goals of SciHub or a project similar to SciHub in the future? How can such innovation help improve the quality of scientific work in general? Indeed, the problem of negative experimental results remaining behind the scenes has been discussed very much lately. In principle, the publication of negative results would certainly spur the development of science, since scientists would not have to waste time checking hypotheses that have already proved to be incorrect. This would also help solve the problem of non-reproducibility of scientific studies. As for the role of SciHub, SciHub was not conceived as a platform for the publication of scientific articles, positive or negative, so in principle this task is not exactly within our remit. However, of course, if experiments showing negative results are published somewhere in closed access, then naturally SciHub will begin to provide free access to them. What steps could society, the scientific community, business and governments take to help spread your experience and make such initiatives as an open science project in the European Union more productive? Well, Firstly, it's good that, in principle, governments are trying to stimulate the development of open access to scientific knowledge. However, on the other hand, the big problem of the European Union and other governmental organizations is that they think a lot about how to properly organize science and the scientific process. That is, they try to control the development of science. In fact, you need to do the opposite, to weaken control and to let it go on its own. This is basically what SciHub offers. SciHub stands for repealing laws on copyright and making the dissemination of information on the Internet, including scientific information, completely free. Then the system organizes itself in an evolutionary process.
If you could talk directly to large publishers, what will be the first thing you would propose to improve the system of scientific publications that exists today? What would you ask them for, or what would you suggest to them? I probably wouldn't ask anything. I just want to thank the scientific publishers for all the work they are doing to ensure that scientific communication continues. However, scientific publishers do not always succeed in that. When so many articles are in closed access, scientific communication is destroyed. This is where SciHub comes to the rescue. That is, SciHub seems to be repairing this system in places where it doesn't work. In principle, SciHub was never intended to destroy anything, but rather the opposite, to repair and improve this process. Thank you very much for sharing your vision, Alexandra. In conclusion, I would like to convey some words of gratitude from scientists who are studying aging and longevity. In particular, our colleagues in public health organizations and groups that help to solve the problems of the elderly are very grateful to you for your work. Each article that is accessed without delay thanks to SciHub often leads to a patient's life being saved. Therefore, thank you very much and let me wish you further success in the development of open science. Thank you.